hello everyone welcome to today's video in this video i will explain about how to identify material parameters for johnson and cook plasticity model and i'm going to show you two ways of doing it one is using excel because it's generally is a uniaxial case so you can survive with excel as well it's one dimensional problem in reality and also how you can do it in abacus which is more tedious way of doing it unless you know python so i will show you one way of of how to do it but you can test on your own in detail while the third option would be why not why am i using parameters why not use the experimental data directly in abacus so there is a possibility for that as well though it has limitations at how much data you have from experiments and also what is going to happen in between the point where you don't have any data for example for if we are using a johnson and cook plasticity model it has a strain hardening which has three parameters a b and n dependent on the equivalent plastic strains and then it is, there's a strain, strain rate sensitivity or strain rate dependence uh, term which is given by this this bracket here and you have two parameters involved c and epsilon naught dot which is a reference strain rate well, this is a plastic strain rate which is dependent on the loading itself and then obviously the thermal softening part which will be irrelevant for this case because we are more concentrating on the strain rate dependent case but if you have stress strain curve for different strain rates as you see here i have five strain rates from 0.001 up to a uh, strain rate of 100 and then you will have curves for different temperatures as well so it gets more complicated as well especially when you, you do it in abacus because you will have to create a number of jobs for individual tests you have to do in abacus which as you have done in experiments and that can take a long time to do if you do it by hand or manually so if python is must for those kind of tests and you can automate the process using python easily however in excel you can directly do it and i will show you one way of doing it for strain rate dependent case and not the thermal softening case for this case this problem so let's jump into the real business and see how we can do it in that okay in the first part of the video i will first start with an excel and i will show you how you can identify parameters for johnson cook model using a simple excel sheet and then i will take you with the same model parameters to abacus and show you that the model parameters which you have identified from excel really works in abacus or if you need to change anything in the parameters so let's start with that so let's see on the screen you can see the parameters which are visible right now and as you can see we are assuming it again these are fictitious uh, values i have just fabricated the data using some analytical relationship which are very similar to johnson and cook model so you will you will get an, a very good comparison once we identify the parameters so we have three strain five strain rates in this case 0 0.001 0 0.1 1 10 and 100 100 per second right so we are so the and this is the data for that if you want to plot that data so i can go and try to plot it with simple graph here it may take some time but it's good to show that so i will just remove everything from here right now so now we have these for three different five different strain rates and you can see as you increase the strain rate from left to right or from top to bottom your stress strain curves are changing and again it's a plastic part so we are not really worried about the elastic part at this point okay so now what we have to do is we have to identify johnson cook model so i have created another sheet and here if you see i'm using the same strain values from my previous experimental data and in this case obviously this was all from experiments while in this case i'm computing the stress using the same relationship if you remember it was a plus b times epsilon raised to power n so a and b are these these co constants here and b3 is basically the strain so strain raised to power 
this n parameter and then I had 1 plus c so c is n4 times lo natural logarithm of epsilon again and that's a strain rate epsilon dot so in this case it's p1 for example dot over the parameter which was epsilon naught dot right so these are the parameters if I vary those now based on these definitions so I have done it for all the five cases only thing which changes in these cases is the strain rate which is which is given here okay in the, th in the second part of the equation so dollar d1 is basically the strain rate for this case it should be dollar f1 so you see it's there so now I start to fit these curves so you see they're already there but you will start with some values and you will start fitting it I have so this is for the whole all set of values with the model and experiments and these this graph again you can plot the graph as I showed you before in this here so you can just plot all the graphs in one go and this is for only for 0.001 to fit that first and then start with this so I will also suggest at first start with one of the curves and try to find a b and n value in an approximate way and then start playing around with the strain rate sensitivity parameters so in this case you see there is some differences so I have played around with that so let's try to bring it close to each much closer so let's say I change it to 25 so you see curves start to shift up a bit or maybe 26 for example and it's further close but you see my modeling more my experiments are still below um, above this for a higher strain rate so maybe to increase further uh, or maybe increase the hardness which is b parameter here so let's make it 280 and you see it's trying to get closer to that also i can play around with 0.31 maybe so what happens so you see it's a perfect match and i was able to fit all the parameters for a strain rate cases as well after changing c and m so if you see i have already fixed those parameters but you can start with any guess let's say 0.1 so you see there's a difference and also you can start with 0.001 as a reference strain rate and then you can also play around with that so for example you can see if i change it to 0.2 it starts to further go up so i need to decrease this value rather than increase it so let's say 0.1 which is close so further reduce it to so 0.0 8 and you see it's coming back to that again you can have multiple combination of these parameters which can give you the best fit so again you can decide based on that but try to see i mean this will be more close to the a parameter it will be more close to the yield strength of the material at the reference strain rate so maybe start with these th parameters and then move to this one 0.75 i think oh sorry 0.075 and you see we are very close now so again you can increase further it's going away so maybe decrease so you see it's almost a fit now so so this way you can identify the parameters and now you have a set of parameters for a b c and n c okay and epsilon naught dot so once we have this now we can go in our case and do simulations for these strain rates with one element in a unique zilk setup and then see if these parameters really give me similar curve or not so now let's go to the abacus and see if we can do that so now we are in abacus and you can see i have already created a part but for those who are not familiar you can just create a part by pressing create part button 3d deformable solid extrusion and then i just created a rectangle uh, from whatever and then i give a extrusion depth let's say one or something and then that will give me that picture so it's one by one by one thing okay so that's what you see here as part one so this is my part and that basically is one by one by one cube property is more tricky in abacus because in the excel case we didn't require the elastic constant but in this case abacus will ask us to define the elastic constants so I'm going to use any fictitious value for the time being and let's say I can use a value of uh, 200 since everything is in millimeters so 200 megapascal gigapascals and then 0.3 or something for a metal I'm assuming it to be a metal and then for the plasticity I can say I'm using uh, uh, plastic and then I can 
select Johnson and Cook parameters. And here I have to define all these parameters A, B, and C. So again, I can take those parameters directly from my Excel sheet. It's 26, 280, 0.31. So 26, 280, 0.31. For M, I don't need M right now, so I'm just gonna use a value of zero. So they don't need anything again I'm just using a 25 or, and transition temperature to be 25 or something I don't know what it's gonna do but so these are the parameters I required I have to have a rate dependent potential so I need to define that again I have different options here for rate dependency and I'm gonna use that option which where, which where I need to identify C and epsilon dot so C is 0 0.073 right so 0.073 and this one was 0.001 all right so my material parameters are now defined as i require but i will have an additional elastic part so i need to pay attention to that okay and then i create a solid section material one and then i assign this section to this element color has changed so this means properties are assigned properly to this part I will go to the assembly I will bring this part or instance this part here and I don't need any more further assembly operations because it's only one part for the analysis again I have two options I can use static or dynamic so let's start with static I'm not sure if it's gonna work but let's do it And you can see I have used, I've increased in the maximum number of increment in case it struggles, but though I don't think so, it will be a problem. It's a simple nonlinear material analysis. And I'm using 0.1 as the maximum time increment to get at least 10 outputs if I'm running it for total time of one second. All right, so no interactions are required. I'm gonna go to the job and now I'm gonna apply boundary conditions which will replicate a Unix, which will be a representative of our un typical uniaxial test so in this case what i will have to do i will fix for example this surface in x direction i need to keep two surfaces free then i will apply another boundary condition i will keep or i will make this surface to be fixed in z direction and top or bottom surface i can fix in y direction so i just i prefer to have a bottom one so you can rotate you can make it display and then you can select and then you say okay you two should be zero so now i have everything ready you can bring it back to that and now i'm going to pull from any one of directions so let's pull it in the z direction okay so if i go here and if i pull in z direction and that will be in u3 direction Again, I need to be careful with the rate sensitivity here. So let's start with 0.001. So, all right. So, so to work out the displacement now, we, we basically need to find out the total displacement I need to apply in one second to ensure that my strain is 0.001. So, and since I have to go up to a total value of, for the case of this, around 0.06 so so this means i need to apply a total displacement of 0.07 i'm just assuming it to 07 because i have some elasticity there as well and i but i need to apply this in certain amount of time that it becomes the total strain the strain rate becomes 0.01 so what i do now is i can just use a calculator here right so so i have applied a total displacement of 0.07 but i need to apply it in such a way in such amount of time that my strain rate is around 0.001 so if the strain rate is the strain over the time and i need to find the time then i need to divide this with the strain rate so if i divide this with the strain rate i will get 70 seconds so again this is this will take a long time but let's try that Edit. and I change it to 70 seconds and then obviously it's not a good idea to have it the time input as 0.1 so maybe I will keep it to one second or something or maybe two seconds as a maximum okay 
and so total time is 70 seconds now i go my loads are okay and but the problem now is i have applied it in the compressive direction so i will go and i will change the direction so i just need to change the sign of this thing once i have done that i go to the mesh i apply c to this part so you need to select the part rather than the assembly first then i'm going to give an element global size of one because i only need one element in this case i'm going to mesh it and i will see what is the element type here because i need a static 3d stress element and i'm using 3c3d8r okay so which is default in this case and then i go to the job and if everything is defined correctly then i can create jc test one jc test zero underscore zero zero one and then i will just create a job and submit it should not take very long but let's wait for it so as you see it, is, it gives me an error and just because i didn't i did everything so quickly that i forgot that the temperature should not be the same otherwise it will become infinite because the, it's theta trans, melt minus theta transition so maybe i will use this as zero as i'm not initiating any temperature and now it should work i think or to be on the safe side i would prefer to use a high value for this let's say 500 degrees celsius okay so now i go back and run again and hopefully this time it should be running okay So now you see it has started the input file processor, which is completed. So now input data is okay. And it has started analysis. And you see it's going pretty fast now. I started, the, I gave you the initial increment 2.1 and maximum was around two. So it is reaching towards two and then it will be quickly go going towards that so as you see now analysis is finished total time of 70 seconds it, it hardly took a couple of minutes to sim simulate this on a normal pc so it was pretty quick for one element and now i go to the results and firstly i will see the deformation and see my tensile loading is acting properly so you can see it's pulling in this direction and it's contracting on the in the normal to the two surfaces so everything worked fine as i required and now i'm going to create an xy data so s33 and L, uh, uh, logarithmic strain 33 and we'll see how it looks like it should be close to what we saw in excel so let's look for le33 and also s33 because yeah stresses are there and then i'm going to select the select the element so i select this one and then save the data so data is saved now hopefully so if i go now to manager xy data manager I can see stresses and strains, so I will just combine them to get a combined plot. Otherwise, right now they are plot; they will be plotted as a function of time. So I need to plot stress as a function of strain. So I will go to, sorry, not this. So I will go to operate on XY data because I need to now combine them, and I will select combine. And I prefer always to use absolute because my stress or strain can be negative, depends on the direction, or based on the type of stress whether it's tensile idle or compressive depending on the deformity conditions i'm avoiding that and then i apply this so now if i save it as x y whatever data and if i plot this so it should look something like this and you see it's pretty pretty much what we expected so if you remember my stress strain my yielding should have started at around 20 something and it should have gone up to this value for this. So I, again, 
we only need up to 0.05 so i can change the scale to 0.05 here and so that's how it looks like right so now if you look at the excel if you remember excel plot it was like that and it was also going around 140 or something at 0.06 okay so we can plot 0.06 and it's also going the same way here okay so 0. Point something so oops, sorry yeah so it's also going up to those kind of values yeah so let's do 170 all right so so it's around 0.147 or something while what you see here is around 140 something as well so 145 146 so so you see we what we identified here works in 1d case but if you have complicated loading your tests include include by axial or tri axial loading or there is a complex interaction between lateral and direct stresses or normal stresses then you might have to directly do it like i have done it here in, in abacus what in that case what you will have to do is you will have to basically create these models let's say you have to create five models here with five different material properties materials and then you have to change the parameters one by one run all of them together and plot the curves as as we discussed in the in my previous video on material modeling and material parameter identification but then it's a tedious job so i think excel is the best bit for uni excel cases and you can see you got a very good fit for all the cases and we got and we got a confirmation from our abacus simulation as well the next thing is basically now if you don't get a good fit right not all the models or not all the curves can be fitted uh, as you see here because this is again a fictitious generated data so it fits well but in experiments you can get a very random response and sometimes models don't really fit really well so you need to find the best compromise so how to deal with that kind of problem for that kind of problem what you can do is instead of using johnson and cook model here here so let's leave it like this for the time being and i create a new model here and instead of so i can define my elastic part as i did before so let's say whatever was the elastic constants and material pro, elastic Poisson's ratio and everything but for the plastic part i can use the default way as i showed you in my previous videos where i will define the yield stress and plastic strain but in this case i will also use it and i will define it as a function of strain rates right and now I, what i need to do is i need to do nothing but to paste these stresses and strains as a function of strain rate okay so what i can do is let's create another sheet here create a copy well okay so we already have experimental data so it's easier there uh, all right, so what I will do, I will first paste the stresses for this case, in my abacus model, because I need the stresses first, so I will do that. Then I will paste the plastic strains. So which are these ones, all right? And lastly, I will paste the strain rate. So this was for the case of 0 0.001, and then I can just do that like this, okay? and so i have to just copy paste the whole thing here until this point it's easier to do in excel so let's do it there insert okay so i'll just do it 0 0.001 and then i just because it's easier on this side so and then i copy it here oh i think i pasted this data anyway so then you can just copy paste here okay so this way you see you have done everything here now what you can do is uh, you have the first table now you go to the next line and then you can paste the next train rate data so for example now i will paste the this one which is 0.1 
all right and i will do the same now i will just paste this data in other case stresses then strains well plastic strain obviously and then the strain rate and for strain rate again this is 0.1 so i just do it here so so now i have defined two strain rate data now i can go to the next line and i can add all the other ones as well so for this the time being i'm just using these two and what abacus will do is abacus will take the strain rate as a function of these as we define in the model as well and it will interpolate in between whatever values it's going to get so i'm not sure what it uses but i suspect that it uses a linear interpolation so we need to be careful in using this kind of approach although this is more accurate because sometimes you don't get an excellent fit between the model and this so might be useful to use directly the data in in your models but then interpolation would be a big problem and also if there is a non-uniform change for example here there's a big difference in strain rates as compared to the others so if you are using interpolate linear interpolation you might be far off from the results and you can come across problems so for intermediate strain rates you might get different type of results so again you should be careful about that but you can use that this model as well as i have done here and so let's do this way so now i have defined this so what i will do now i will just go back and I will edit the section here and just to show you because I am just it is right now associated with material one but now I'm going to use a table based thing and so now everything is changed I will go and create a run so JC not JC but default okay so I'm going to use the same amount of loading so it should in principle follow the same curve as 0.001 case okay so and then i submit again so let's wait for it so you see now job is finished and it went okay without any problems the only issue or thing which i forgot to mention to you was when you are defining the properties as a table uh, you need to define the static yield strength as well at zero strain rate which is which means that below this 0.001 there will be no change or no effect of rate so this is for a static case and then you define the strain rate dependent data otherwise you will always get an error so please make pay attention to that other than that nothing is changed everything worked fine i go to the job now and i press results to see everything is okay as a default you see everything is working fine again you can automate the process of this whole plotting thing as i showed you in my material parameter identification video to shown on the top or you can do it as this way so i'm going to go again for le33 and s33 for this element right and i will save the data i should have deleted the previous one but let's see i will find a way to See the differences so so this one was the old data while one underscore one is a new one that's what in the default way of a backers of saving, saving similar named variables so now i'm going to operate on data combine time for a real test because we're going to compare this and then maybe absolute and then so i did a two which is a default one now so now i go back I plot these two and see if there are any differences and you see they are pretty much the same but the blue line is basically coming from that experimental data which had some missing points so due to the interpolation you will always get some some error so so that's why be careful how much data you are providing and what sort of data you're providing but you can see all all in all you are getting a pretty much the similar response as you were expecting in your real case also in analytical model you are get, getting a straight line as this one but fea gives you a very smooth response as you see here so there will be slight differences as well in reality but overall you are seeing that it's very much the same so i hope this helps
what you have what i have showed you today is how to identify parameters for johnson cook model using an excel simple excel sheet and then how to verify that what you are getting as a parameter in excel are good by doing a simple rve type simulation for unique excel test in abacus cae and then how to define the data directly in abacus using rather than identifying johnson cook parameters but then you have to be careful about this so at the end of the day you see there are some levels of uncertainties in the model and modeling so as an analyst you have to decide and judge carefully what you are doing is correct or not so i hope this was helpful if you have any questions again get back to me and i will try to answer to you thank you very much and bye bye for now